everyone my name is Tiffany and this is my channel who's your handmade thank you so much for stopping by today in today's video it's another episode of hashtag Friday sews I'm still a little under the weather y'all but I'm here and I have so much to share with you let's do an Easter dress parade and talk about that hot topic right now Joe Wayans. <laughs> if that sounds interesting to you, stick around. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope that you will consider subscribing before you leave. I would love to get to know you better and welcome you into the sewing community. And thank you so much to each one of my friends who keep showing up video after video. Thank you for your support and your kindness. And above all, thank you for your friendship. It means the absolute world to me. <laughs> Today I am just wearing a ready to wear shirt. I love these shirts, they're really comfortable. They don't fit me exactly right. The shoulders kind of bother me, but they're so comfortable that I just keep wearing them. <laughs> also sporting some new glasses this week. So I'm still trying to work out the glare where they hit them. <laughs> so bear with me as I learn how to use these new glasses. My family and I have been a little bit under the weather this week. You can probably hear it in my voice. <laughs> if I have to take a sneeze break here in a second, just pardon me. <laughs> but I did want to bring a video to you all today. I do have a lot to catch you up on. Tuesday's video was supposed to be all about Easter dresses, but alas, I was not feeling like recording, so I skipped out on Tuesday's video. I hope that you all will forgive me for that. So today I do want to talk about Easter dresses. I would love to share some past Easter dresses that I have made. And then I do want to talk about Joann's. Now I've held off on talking about Joann's, although I have been following the story for a few weeks, maybe a month or more now. Um, but I did not want to cause any panic or just talk about rumors. So now it's more than rumors and we'll talk about that um, here in this Hashtag Friday Says video as well. Like I said, this is a Hashtag Friday Says video. Y'all know all about those. I'll be catching you up on my week and I would love to catch up on yours. So give this video a thumbs up if you like this kind of content and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you've been sewing on this week or what you have coming up this weekend. I love chatting with you guys down below in the comment sections. I'm sorry it took me a few extra days to catch up on last week's comments, but I'm caught up now and I'm excited to chat with you guys down uh, below in the comment section again. Let's just jump right into Easter. So I am full focused on Easter 2024 here. I love to sew for Easter. So I do have a three-year-old little girl, if you are unaware. I love to sew for her. It is such a joy to sew beautiful. I love this word. Someone in the comments called them confections. I love that. <laughs> I definitely view them as little confections for my little girl. I love making and creating things for her, especially for special occasions. And I have done that for three years in a row now. Her first Easter, she was just a little baby. She was under one and I really was not into sewing that much yet. So I did not make her first Easter outfit, but I have made her uh, Easter outfits for the following three years of Easter. So I thought I would just do a quick parade of those for you here real quick. I've got most of them here beside me and I thought I would show you. And of course I will pop some pictures in as well. Let me just go ahead and tell you that Easter is brought to this family by Little Lizard King. <laughs> That pattern company is so amazing. I definitely use their patterns all the time for Addie and for a special occasion dress, I am using them almost exclusively for Easter dresses. In the future, I might try to veer out and do something different, but for the um, past couple years and this year, I've went back to Little Lizard Let's King. start out with 2022's Easter dress. This is the Little Lizard King Lane. Lane is a beautiful, uh, very special occasion dress. It has a lot of different options. I'll pop up a picture of the graphic. Little Lizard King does a great job with giving you options. Do you want to go super dramatic? 
Okay, they provide that. Do you want to go super simple? Okay, they provide that as well. So you can decide the level of degree that you want to go to um, with their patterns. And then as I'm going to show you for this year, I've done some extras. For 2022, for the first Easter dress that I made, um, my little girl Addie, this is what I went with. This is a skirt and then you have an overskirt. It's cut out in a circle. So you have the back is also one piece. These sleeves are a bear and looking back on this version, I'm, I'm so impressed with how I did <laughs> on these sleeves way back in 2022 when I really did not have um, that much sewing experience. I did a really good job. These sleeves are tricky with that fluted ruffle. Did that really well. Used some cotton fabrics from Hobby Lobby. This floral is from Hobby Lobby and the seersucker, that's actually seersucker, has buttons down the back. You have a placket here that goes into the skirt. Beautiful little dress. I also used my favorite a diaper cover or little bloomers. So it's called the Ruby diaper cover. Love that pattern. It is lined. You use elastic in the waist in there at the um, leg holes. Wonderful, wonderful pattern. Addie, I'm not making her diaper covers anymore. Um, we are doing really well with potty training. So she's, she's growing out of these, you guys. <laughs> So I'm not making those for her anymore. And then of course I had to sew her a bonnet. And this is the Little Lizard King Clover. Clover is a beautiful little bonnet. I did it in the seersucker fabric as the main. And then I used the floral for the inside contrast. And then you have ties. I just love the um, beautiful ruffle detail. It also has a plain brim that you can do. They have pin tucks that you can do in that pattern. An excellent little pattern. And really all you have are two pattern pieces um, plus these straps. So this is like a third pattern piece. Very easy to sew. The hardest thing about the clover is making those buttonholes. You do have nine buttonholes that you make um, in order to make this kind of flounce edged uh, cap for their little head. So super cute there. That was 2022. Let's move on to 2023. So last year's Easter dress, another Little Lizard King pattern. This is the Little Lizard King Lund dress, L-U-N-D, kind of a different name beautiful dress. This one really challenged me last year to use uh, fabrics from my stash. I was in the middle of a stash challenge, which I'm still in the middle of, <laughs> but I wanted to use what I had on hand. And so I found some beautiful blue themed fabrics that went really well together. Lund features a simple skirt. So this is a simple skirt under here. And then this is an overskirt. And the really cool thing about um, what I did with this pattern is that I put this overskirt on backwards. The pattern really wants this ruffle to go in the back, uh, in the back there, but I wanted it to be open in the front so that you could see that beautiful fabric um, from the front too. So I flipped those around on my own. I was really proud of myself. Again, you have a basic bodice with buttons down the back. And I added a sash on to this version. The Lund does come with sash uh, pieces, so I was able to make that pretty little sash. And then this ruffle just really sets it off. I love this ruffle. Now I did make Addie a bonnet as well. I made her the Little Lizard King Auburn bonnet, but y'all, <laughs> In this move that we've recently done in the last year, I have packed that away somewhere that I cannot locate. So I'm just gonna post pictures of her here. That auburn bonnet pattern was really great. It was another great one from Little Lizard King. I don't remember any issues from sewing it up. It was a great sew and it looked so cute with her little blend dress. Okay, so let's get into 2024 this Easter. What have I made for Addie this Easter? I went back to my original 
original. I went back to that Lane pattern and I used it again for Addie's 2024 Easter dress. And I am so in love with this dress, you all. It is beautiful. It is giving little Bo Peep so much. <laughs> And I just love it. Easter is the time to go a little crazy with beautiful, poofy, crazy kind of dresses. And I, I think I did really well with this one. So like I said, this is the Little Lizard King Lane. It has the simple skirt and then you use the overskirt, which I have lined. So I've done some more um, kind of more technical things with this version of my lane. I have fully lined the overskirt and the circle skirt. And on top of that, I have inserted two layers of tulle to just the bottom, oh, about six inches. So I'm gonna pop a picture in. I took of um, me doing this process and I was just guessing and kind of trying to figure out how I could add some poof here at the bottom for Addie's skirt. Well, right now I am in the middle of making Addie's Easter dress. This is her skirt and I thought I would walk you through what I've done to this thing. It honestly looks like an inner tube. <laughs> it looks like one of those uh, pool floaties right now but I have done a lot of extra things to this thing um, past what the pattern has called for. I wanted to add more poof and it's definitely taking me a while to figure it out. Spot some candy over there for emotional support here. <laughs> Just wanted to show you real quick what I've done. So this is the main fabric. I have this uh, white lining fabric that I'm using. It does have some imperfections in it. That's okay. Nobody's gonna see it. To the white, I added that tool. I showed a picture of that probably um, by now. And then in the middle between these two, I have sandwiched in this really darling little eyelet. This is a a pink delicate eyelet that I picked up from Hobby the Lobby. Finished look. <laughs> is gonna be this showing from the outside with the gingham and then the tool will be underneath the white layer for added poof hopefully so let's sew this inner tube and see what we get <laughs> okay inner tube sewn <laughs> it's actually the skirt i should call it skirt Okay, let's turn this puppy right side out and see if we did this correctly. You guys, it worked. Oh my goodness, this is so darling. Look at that trim. It's on there. The tool is on the right, right side. We have a finished hem now because I did the aligned skirt. And we're good to go, y'all. We are good to go. Oh my goodness. So what I'm going to do now is pressing. I'm going to press this and I will probably top stitch it down just to hold those layers together. And then I'm going to be ready to put my bodice on this skirt. Yay. <laughs> what I really probably should have done is just make her a separate petticoat. And I do have plans to make her a petticoat in the future that she can wear under uh, fluffy dresses like this. But in a time crunch, I decided to just go with those two layers of tulle underneath her skirt. So that was all very interesting. On top of that, I have added this eyelet trim. So I showed that last week. There's the eyelet trim on her little arms. I fussy cut this bodice to try to get that beautiful bouquet of flowers into the middle of her bodice. I think that turned out really well. And then I've also put eyelet at the bottom. <laughs> I just wanted the um, eyelet to really shine and to cut, flow through the dress from the sleeves to the bottom. Now the lane does not come with ties. 
the lane pattern does not give you any kind of tie options. But I went to my Lund pattern and I used it for a length um, pattern and cut out this beautiful ribbon. Kind of trimmed there with some beautiful little lace. Just really pretty. I thought it added a lot to the back of Addie's dress. I loved that ribbon bow back there in the back. Just beautiful. Also did three buttons going down the back. Kind of big buttons so I only did three. And I'm just so happy with how this beautiful Easter dress turned out for Addie. On top of the dress, I did make her another bonnet. I went back to the clover. Here is the size four, the biggest size they make in the clover bonnet. This is it right here with the wide brim option. So I've tried to make it as big as I can and I think this is this is the last year <laughs> that she'll be wearing a bonnet uh, like this from Little Lizard King because she's just, she's growing up. So just like the one that I made previously, you have two uh, pieces here that you put together via the buttons and the buttons holes, and then you have the ties. This piece, what I forgot to mention with the other one, is actually reversible because it is fully lined. So I could turn it, I could take it off and turn it and then it would have the contrast gingham pink on the back. Um, so I might end up doing that, but really cute, fun clover bonnet. These things are so easy. If you are a person who loves to add bonnets to your little one's outfit, those are so much fun to sew up. You could do them really, really quickly. And that is Addie's Easter Dress Parade. So let me talk to you about a couple that I have made and making for myself. Back in 2022, I made the Friday Pattern Company Davenport for an Easter dress for myself. Loved that pattern. It was very, very pretty. Um, I have not made that one since for myself, but it is a really fun pattern. I need to revisit it. I'm also trying to make an Easter dress for myself this year. I did not do one in 2023, but I am trying to do so in 2024. It's back there right now on Bernadette. And let me just tell you, it's not looking like much yet. <laughs> so this is the Styla Abingdon dress. And um, when you look at that pattern, you're gonna say, are you sure you cut out the right thing, Tiffany? <laughs> <laughs> it is the right thing. I am ready to start the shirring, but I have not done that yet. So the, the front minus the ruffle is all one piece. So I need to um, shirr the waist and then the sleeves, and then it'll start looking more like that dress, hopefully. So right now it doesn't look like very much, but hold on, stick with me, and hopefully I can get this Abingdon dress to come out right. The fabric that I'm using is a really pretty silky type that I I purchased from Joann's quite a while ago. This is the fabric right here. Definitely looks springy and eastery to me. So I had a lot of this in my stash. I had four and three fourths yards of um, this fabric in my stash. So that's why I chose to use it for the Abingdon dress because it is a fabric hog. There's a ruffle at the bottom um, that takes up a lot of fabric. So I did have enough fabric, it's all cut out. So now hopefully I can just sew it up appropriately <laughs> and we could have an Easter dress for 2024. So that's what I've been working on, what I will be working on in the coming a few weeks here before Easter. Let's talk about Joann's and then I'll talk about life. <laughs> so the Joann's drama, y'all. Like I said, I haven't talked about this officially on my channel because it was just rumors. But now there are a lot of articles out there that you can find. There's YouTube videos that are out there that you can watch talking about the Joann's Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing. So let's just talk about it for just a second and I'm going to tell you you what I plan to do. So chapter 11 bankruptcy is not a closure doors kind of bankruptcy. I'm not a lawyer or you know a bankruptcy specialist or anything like that but from doing my research and reading a lot of articles on this uh, chapter 11 is where they're trying to redesign their business model. They're trying to save their company. Um, so you won't see them closing too many doors. There was an article that said they could be closing some stores, but for the majority, they're going to be open and operating 
mostly as normal. What you could see is that their fabric, new fabrics won't be coming in as readily because they're gonna be having to pay their suppliers with cash um, for their payments and they won't be doing that as much. So you might see that new fabric start to dwindle Another thing that you might see is some price increases. So I have been seeing on my social media, the pattern sale from like now until the end of March is $2.99, not $1.99 like usual. So that's a $1 price increase, which it could be a lot worse, but that's definitely not the normal. So they've already put into place some price increases, uh, especially there on the patterns that we're noticing right now. So just be on the lookout for that. What I will personally be doing is still supporting their store. Joann's is important to me. Is it my favorite place to buy fabric? No, but it is very important to my sewing journey. A lot of my fabric here in my stash is from Joann's. So I'm still going to be supporting them. I'm going to be going to their stores and buying um, like I normally do. I'll be purchasing during my buying month. No, I am not panic buying fabric. <laughs> I don't think anyone should be panic buying anything that never um, never ends up well to be panic doing anything. So please do not panic buy. I will not be panic buying. I'm going to be waiting until my uh, buying window opens up there in April and then I'll be making some conscientious purchasing. What I do want to be doing is using my gift cards. I am a gift card hoarder. I will hoard a gift card like a dragon and just never use it. I think in my mind I'm waiting for like the perfect scenario for what I want to use that gift card for. <laughs> so I'm not going to be doing that anymore. Every time I go to Joann's, I'm going to be trying to use up the gift cards just to be safe, just so I don't lose those gifts that I've received from my family members. Hopefully they will get their business model restructured. Hopefully they'll be able to figure some things out and we will be able to keep our Joann's open. So I encourage you not to panic, not to uh, freak out too much. <laughs> Try to support them as you have always done if you have a local Joann's in your area and you love to shop with them. And now on to life. Like I said, my family's been a little under the weather for the last about two and a half weeks, actually. We've just been passing a virus around, so hopefully we get over that very soon. We have a lot to do this weekend. We're actually camping. I can't say I 100% feel like going, <laughs> but we had it planned um, to go camping with my family this coming weekend, so we will be going to do that. Hopefully the weather will warm up a little bit here in Indiana. It's this way and then that way, warm and then not, so we'll see. When I go camping, I do want to take a couple projects with me, and the, the one that I know for sure I'll be taking with me is that crochet pattern that I shared last week, those crochet hot pads. So fun. You can do them absolutely anywhere. They're really small. Take that project with you anywhere. <laughs> so I'll definitely be taking that one with me. Okay, I think that's going to do it for this Hashtag Friday Says video. This is a long one for me. <laughs> I really enjoyed chatting with you all. It's been so great to spend some of your Friday with you. Don't forget to leave a comment down below. Let me know what your weekend sewing plans look like. I love chatting with you all. I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.